Hi, this is going to be a quick reaction video to a video just published by the Prime Team, uh, where two experienced programmers try to co-review a lecture written in Clojure as part of the show. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. Uh, now, if you have, you have seen that even being them both experienced programmer, it was not straightforward for them to understand the implementation. Part of that is, of course, because they are not closure programmers and they barely know the language. But I also think even then, uh, they could have had a much better time if they do it the closure way, which I think a lot of closure beginners miss, uh, since not a lot of language support it. Uh, with the closure way, I mean live REPL programming with live value inspection, instead of just staring at the code and only relying on names. So first, let's start the REPL. Great. Uh, now the first thing we can do is to call the function we want to understand with a couple of different inputs. Uh, that will already give us an idea of the shape of the return for a specific input. This is why you sometimes see these comment sections at the bottom of some closure files with some function calls to try. Now, let's use some more tools to look into that function. I'll be using the flowstorm debugger for looking at the flow of our function as an example, uh, that, but there are many other ways to explore a closure process. I'll not be going into setup here, uh, take a look at the user guide for it. Great. Uh, now let's call our Lex function again. Uh, we can quickly have an overview of all the functions that got called as part of our Lex function call. Since we are interested in the Lex function itself, let's double click it. And now we can see all the times the function was called and what the return values were. From here, it is much easier to see how each function is calling itself, advancing the position and the input and how they are building the result back. Now let's double click on the first call uh, and step through the code. Here we can see the flow of our code and how our values flow uh, through expressions. Uh, some of the questions they have in the video uh, can be answered pretty quickly just by clicking around. One interesting thing we can see while stepping uh, is how after the first input token our function finishes. This is because uh, this Lexer implementation is lazy. So when we call it, it will generate just the first token and finish. And uh, we'll continue generating them as you consume the result. The reason we have seen all the execution in the debugger is because the REPL printing system is consuming all the output in order to display it. And that is why we can keep stepping on it. Let's double check this behavior by calling the function, but only consuming three tokens from the output this time. As you can see, now the lex function only processed four times, uh, the initial call and the three position we asked it, which, uh, which throws some lights on how our lazy implementation works, especially for beginners. And these are some of the ways we can interact with the closure process in order to understand its behavior. So because we are interacting with a live process, we don't only relay on co-reading to know what is going on, which is especially important in dynamic type of languages. And that's it. I hope people find it useful. Bye-bye. Um,